I mean, Compass Gaming, they aren't the, the greatest at, like, really taking the hugest opportunities, but they obviously have some mechanical skills. So when it comes down to it, if they can execute fights well enough, they can give Hellraiser a run for their money. And, yeah, Artstyle, he has been a little bit shaky in his return to some extent. We saw a great play from them just yesterday, but over the past few weeks, it has shown that he has his ups and downs, and uh, that comes with the draft, that comes with the... Uh, the execution of their strategies as a whole. So it really just uh, depends what uh, Hellraisers we see today. That the top tier one has the potential to take games off of just about anyone or if they are going to be a uh, little shaky going into it. Yeah, uh, for the side of Hellraisers, since I, I've cast them a lot recently, I feel like Dread has been playing really strong. He's been doing really well. Uh, playing Shadow Demon actually quite a lot, mainly because Batrider has been so popular uh, in the games that I've cast. So they've been picking up that Shadow Shaman in response to that. And Dubas has also, as I mentioned, been playing that Bat Rider, so he's been doing very well on Aloha Dance, of course, yesterday. I know you were casting uh, along with Zai Ori when he had that five man chrono, so Aloha Dance definitely came to play. Oh, yeah, LD Compass was with me on that one, but it was, oh, was incredible. It LD? Yeah, mm -hmm. well. Alright. Apologies. <laughs> Gotta get it right. I watched that today, too, the, the little clip there. Anyways, uh, Compass Gaming, Fee Solo Mecco, PSM. I, I've. Remember him from back in the day in NEL and, of course, EEL, which I believe is also coming back here pretty soon. Uh, but I think I've only cast Compass Gaming really one time, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they're about. But we've already got some bands, Razor, Void, Brew, and the like in Compass Gaming now going for that first pick. Yeah, really, a lot of deliberation about this one. They're going to open up with the Skywrath here. There's a lot of ways that Hellraisers can go to deal with this. Either just picking up heroes that don't rely too much on casting spells, or maybe they just pick ones that can exploit the fact that Skywrath is very squishy. The Viper has been kind of a hero of choice for a lot, but uh, obviously there are a lot of different ways to approach this particular matchup. Hellraisers have a, a pretty consistent drafting style. They throw a few interesting things here and there. Like They do run, sometimes run Leshrac in a supportive sense, and things like that can be pretty cool. But really, uh, generally speaking, is going to be a, a lineup that revolves around Dread and Aloha Dance and what they can accomplish across the map. First and foremost, the Centaur Warrunner, a great hero and disengaging for fights, and accompanied with the Bat Rider here. This is a, a strat that we see FNG pick up a lot for um, Navi. Yeah, I mean, you kind of double down on who goes into your off lane. Obviously, both those heroes can do it. We already saw Bat Rider in the mid lane once today, and then, of course, one can be mid, one can be solo safe, or off lane and mid, however you want to run it. Uh, Bat Rider also, whatever role he takes, can always go into the jungle if any supports have been stacking up, so... It's interesting. I, I haven't seen it. I haven't watched too much of that tier one Dota. Just been pretty busy casting what I get to cast, and that's about it for me. But obviously, looking forward to see what Hellraisers bring out here. I saw them, like you said, they do interesting things. The other day, I think they had uh, Pugna and Juggernaut. So the Healing Ward and the Nether Ward strat uh, with a five man push that ended a game pretty quickly. Uh, doesn't look like they'll be throwing that into the mix here. Maybe maybe they can. I mean, Death Prophet is still available here. Also, the Pugna. I mean, Pugna goes a long way against Skywrath. Even Nyx Assassin we saw played once today. Can, that Mana Burn can hit a support Skywrath for like 500 damage, which is pretty much all of his HP later on. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they're probably going to be trying to run the Bout Rider in the off lane with the Centaur actually in a, like a safe lane core roll. And that would get or him the blink. Lane, yeah. Yeah, they would get the blink dagger up pretty early on. It depends on what compass go for if they want to actually put the pressure out there. Arte, he generally drafts early game aggression type carries, so not something that you generally need to put pressure on, but uh, it is possible if he goes for something late, a Spectre or Morphling, uh, could rattle off a, a dozen heroes under that qualification. But in that situation, yeah, maybe they want to go for the aggro try, and even I've seen a couple of drafters go for the combination of Centaur with Abaddon, where you get the Aphotic Shield, Double Edge, and it's a huge <laughs> burst of magical nuke damage. But uh, unless that's warranted, unless that feels really necessary and they have to put huge amounts of pressure out, they're probably just going to run it safe and get some good roaming supports. Yeah, we could even see the, uh, like I said, Dread has been playing really well on that Shadow Demon. We could see Centaur Warrunner plus Shadow Demon in a lane together where you just have the disruption into the stomp and then, of course, uh, that double edge. But Shadow Shaman comes out, so we've got our favorite combo, or maybe least favorite combo. It does get played quite a lot together. Skyrath Mage and Shadow Shaman. Yeah, the Shadow Demon will actually be taken out. Earthshaker as well, and then... The heroes I actually expected Hellraiser to pick with the first two picks, the Viper and the Wraith King, they will ban them out in the second phase, and they've got the first pick here. 
uh, in phase two. So we'll see what they want to go with. I, I thought it would have been the Shadow Demon, but now they might have to reconsider. Yeah, the Shadow Demon Earthshaker are pretty smart bands here. Long range disables are something that would really cause some issues with Skywrath and Shadow Shaman can disrupt their early ganks for first blood attempts. And uh, obviously, you mentioned how great the Shadow Demon can be. But picking up this uh, Pugna Strat, how did they run it last time? Well, what they did was Pugna and Juggernaut, and they just, you know, basically got the levels. Pugna was in the mid lane, or maybe it was a safe lane, at farm priority regardless, and not really too contested. Picked up a mech, and then they just got together with the healing ward with the mech and just bulldozed over buildings. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that could really be done. Even Centaur War Runner lends himself to the push. If he tanks the tower with return damage, it's not too big early because your strength isn't super high, return isn't leveled up, but it's still something. That's when you stack up that Bracer Dota on max return. The new, the new meta. But uh, is a was it a support juggernaut or was it another core hero that they were? It was it was support it's juggernaut. Here. Okay, cool. So they have a lot of potential with that. The decrepify blade fury would be really good, and it is really good against these heroes. Skyrath, not maybe not as much because if he gets the ancient seal off before the spin, then obviously you can't make yourself magic immune. But it's good against Shadow Shaman. It's good against Nyx Assassin. I would love to see a supportive juggernaut here, but we'll see if they have the setup for it. Maybe need the the initiating stunner support first and foremost, so maybe we'll see something like Avenge, which is pretty good against the Shadow Shaman, and uh, really good using Sun Wards against Nyx. So, uh, there's a lot of ways they can run it, but uh, a key aspect of their strategy has to be the pickoff potential between Centaur and Bat. You go with the Stampede Lasso, you're going to be able to pull somebody dramatically out of position, and if it's the Nyx, then he might not be able to defend himself with the Spike Carapace. So, that could be really cool for getting some kill momentum, and behind that, of course, taking tower after tower. Pugna Nether Blast is actually really powerful there for just chunking down the towers almost as rapidly as a Shadow Shaman can, and that definitely makes him a difficult target to deal with as far as his general game momentum, and he has to be pretty high target priority to make sure that he doesn't sustain through the fight. Yeah, a lot of uh, Hellraiser's pickoff potential, actually, well, besides the Stampede, so at least level 6 with the Stampede Blast, so, but then you're using two ultimates there. Uh, it's going to be pretty Blink Dagger uh, reliant. Like, they mm -hmm. need to get the Blink Daggers on the Bat Runner and the Centaur. Maybe just one of them will be enough, and then through assist or kills, the other one can find their Blink Dagger. But one of them is going to have to do okay. If they both get shut down, then you sell Hellraiser is off to a slower start. Maybe the Nyx Assassin can get rolling. And if Nyx Assassin is always getting started and picking off the Pugna very, very quickly, well, Radiant then that sort of slows down the push. Not entirely, because now we've got Shakiro, which is basically everyone's new favorite hero. And, well, a lot of heroes that could potentially fight for a core position in this lineup, actually all four of them, we'll see what Jakiro does. I'm, I'm thinking just to support here, though, just with that Liquid Fire skill build. Yeah, I still like what they can do with it. The Liquid Fire plus the uh, Nether Blast is just going to make it so a Trium Protector isn't an option for keeping your towers alive much longer if they wanted to run a core Skywrath or Nyx. And, uh, of course, that also means that... Uh, in general, you're just going to have that much more momentum behind your push. They don't even need like a hard right clicker to bring down these towers. The magic damage is going to be sufficient, and the reduced attack speed is going to be annoying as well. No matter what uh, core hero allocation is going to be, which, like I said, I think it's going to be bad offlane, Pugna mid, and Centaur safe. Uh, no matter the case, the Jakira will be able to make a pretty big impact on this game. And The only thing that uh, is kind of confusing to me is why do you think they took out the Wraith King and the Viper? They're both... Heroes with a lot of effective HP when you consider the second life of the Wraith King and the Corrosive Skin, but is it really that threatening if they're going for the early presence, early kills, and early push? Yeah, I feel like the the Wraith King would be more threatening than the Viper in this case, although earlier we did see a Viper just kind of rip people apart. Sure, and, sure. and in... Whoa, that was terrifying. If my power goes out... My power has gone out because it's storming. I live in Florida. It's inevitable. Um... But hopefully it doesn't. Uh, Viper, obviously, you know, in any game, any circumstance, if a fight goes wrong, Viper has the potential to clean up. But I don't think that's as bad here as maybe you have to kill the Wraith King twice or you can't retreat. Although you can retreat from anything with Centaur Stampede. I don't know. I mean, they got to be in heroes. Those are popular heroes that everyone has been playing that could put a bit of a pickle into your strategy of just pushing. I think the biggest hero would be a core Venomancer coming out from Compass. I don't think they ban it because Compass start off with two supports as their first pick, Skyrath and Shadow yeah. Shaman. So how do you fit a Venom into that besides running him core? And 
not a lot of teams are willing to do that besides really VG Gaming. Yeah, I think the well, Corvino is, is really coming into play a lot more than the supportive one these days. But even still, it leaves them with such a squishy lineup against a Centaur. Like, yeah. every single hero would be easily killable. Maybe the Nyx gets a Carapace, but that's the only exception to it. Otherwise, they're just fodder for it. So, no, they have to go for something a little bit bigger, something that can manage it better. I'm actually also curious how this Invoker is going to run. We usually always look at it and say, okay, it's big Exhort. <laughs> Invoker all the time. You get the Shackles, you get the Sunstrike. But earlier in uh, SEA Dota game, there was a stand-in playing a safe lane Invoker w that went Wex. And uh, although it didn't actually work out, I think strategically there is some merit to the aspect of EMP versus this team. Pugna, without any mana, is not going to be pushing, is not going to be mecking, is not going to be fighting. And uh, that's pretty... Important in my opinion, also good against Morphling, also against uh, just heroes that don't go for the Arcane Boots. Right now, Pugna and Jakiro might be the ones to go for it, but I don't know. I just see a lot of potential counter push and uh, plenty of setup for it when you consider all these disables. So I think EMP is really cool for bringing the game later, but it depends if they go for a uh, traditional hard carry. Yeah, I mean, if Invoker does go for Quas Wex, though, they're not going to have a lot of damage besides maybe a good Nyx Assassin and initiation. And just magical damage from Shadow Shaman and Skywrath. That won't be enough to probably kill the Centaur. Might not even be enough to kill Jakiro. And Morphling, of course, can strength. Oh, I like the Slark pickup here. Going to be stealing those stats away from the Morphling. So I think Slark's a good pickup. It's a good hero mm -hmm. you could fight with early. I mean, a lot of AoE damage on the side of Hellraisers, though. AoE stunned on the Centaur, fire, Nether Blast. Uh, and of course, the, the damage over time from Jakiro. Like, even if he gets off the Shadow Dance, like, Slark is still in danger. Yeah, definitely. Arte really likes the Slark as well. It, it definitely fits his play style, early aggression and promoting that. Um, it's good, like you mentioned, against the Morphling, and I really like it against the Bat Riders. Dispelling the Sticky Napalm makes it so that you yeah. can just stay on top of his target, no problem at all. And The only thing you really have to worry about is making sure that he isn't liquid fired up since he's so reliant on attack speed. Uh, I will also mention they do have some good ground target disables in the Centaur, the Shakiro, and uh, even the defensive Decrepify oh, could prevent nice. him from staying on the target. So... It's going to be hard work for the Slark, I think, is mm -hmm. it's fair to say. Interesting uh, current uh, setup for who's going to be playing what, though. We're currently looking at Aloha Dance running on the Jakiro. He does play a lot of solo mid. He also played the Faces Void in yeah, that last uh, really cool thing. That was in the safe lane one position. So it looks like he's pretty flexible. Whether or not he's actually going to stay on this Jakiro or they'll swap it out remains to be seen. But it is interesting to note at the very least. Along with that, Gorek is definitely going on the offlane Nyx Assassin. And that is going to leave the Skywrath and the Shadow Shaman to go for the dual support Rome roll that you are talking about very early in the draft. Yeah, and how were we, are you pronouncing Slark? Art, Artes? I, Slark? Honestly, it's a full guess on my part. Arte, Artes, have at it as you will. I have not heard these names pronounced, and I just take it as it is. I know PSM, like you said, he's, he's pretty popular in different uh, in-house leagues and stuff like that, but yeah, that's, that's all I got. All right, good enough. And uh, it looks like we are waiting on the Pugna here, going to be played by Dread. Dread has been playing support for Hellraiser, so that puts the Pugna back to a role you're, I mean, not as used to seeing him on, but I think it's going to be okay. We've already sort of talked about Aloha takes up the Jakiro. I mean, maybe, obviously they know the roles of who plays what on Hellraiser, so maybe they're going to swap. Maybe Dread will go to the Jakiro, Aloha to the Pugna, and sort of get into their head, although I'm not sure how much it matters. Both of those heroes you would put levels on for the same reason, to destroy towers. And yeah. honestly, Liquid Fire might even be better than Nether Blast. Yeah, Debatable, and... But. It still might be showing We're that they aren't me. entirely certain about their roles, because actually, like... Oh, okay, I was posting a screen cap of the draft in my tweet, and I think that might have been a quick upload spike. Too but, much for yeah. your internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right, man. Friggin' American internet. But, uh, yeah, no, Dread's actually been dancing around in a lot of different roles recently. The When he they premiered the team uh, a few weeks back, or a week and a half ago, Dread was actually running a lot of offlane faceless void. He was uh, doing that a lot. Some cool scribbling on the map, if you guys want to check that stuff that. out. But, yeah, Dread played... Offlane Void, he's been playing support, as you mentioned, and now he's on the Pugna. It's showing that they're trying to really find things that'll work. I still think swaps are definitely at hand, because Dubos was playing a lot of support, too, so I don't know. Right now, it doesn't seem like anybody is fitting their previous roles, other than maybe Yoku transitioning into the carry Morphling, but yeah, it's still possible that they could be actually sticking to what they have here. 
Yeah, well, from casting them last weekend, it was always do boss on the Bat Rider, so that seems pretty okay. fixed there. Art style on, I guess, a support centaur. I don't know. They've got a lot of. It's going to be a weird lineup. Basically, they want to fight. They want to kill people. They want to do sort of a four protect one on the Morphling, but Morphling also, with his replicate, will be able to keep you know one along with the other four while he can sort of slow down. Uh, the rat dota. I expect jet on this invoker. I, w I would almost want him to go quas exhort just so he could get the four spirits up with the necro book and really get that split push going down and, and try to make the most of the exchanges on towers. But I can also see from your point of view like go quas wex and then try to come into the fights and win them with that EMP or a tornado EMP. Both seem viable, but I don't know. Now, uh, now thinking about the fact that the centaur is on the table and he's going to get sixed and EMP versus Stampede is almost a non-existent spell. So putting all your eggs in that basket might not be great. And now that they have the addition of the Slark Pounce, the Sunstrike, I think, is a li little bit more reliable than it once was. Previously, it was literally just the Shadow Shaman to set it up and the Nyx Assassin if they stick around for a long time or if he's at level 7. So uh, the fact that now they have some more early Sunstrike potential, I think I would prefer to see it in the Exhort, but we won't actually probably see it until level 2 or 3, because he's starting out with Blades of Attack. Uh, that was the traditional build where you start out with Quas Orb immediately, yeah, and you get your full snap up early. Wax. So we'll see, but uh, I think that he could go either way, and uh, we'll not really know about it until level 3. Yeah, uh, the Blades of Attack makes me think Quas Wex, because we see those Quas Exhort invokers go so heavily into just Brown Boots, Midas and then Necro Book into Boots of Travel, and you're, sure. you're playing that early split push. I mean, not to say you can't go Quas Exhort and also finish Phase, but again, we'll just have to see. The game is still paused, so it's all just pure speculation at this point. Um, I'm curious what the lanes are going to be. You think it's just going to be Gorek offlane on the Knicks and then that defensive tri lane? I think you might have touched on that a little earlier. Oh, yeah, definitely. Gorek is their offlaner for sure. He's also their drafter, and he likes to kind of build things around where he can get active. This Nyx Assassin fits that well. Uh, he and the Slayer can just kind of go for Roman gank trains where they know the wards are not and cause real grief for Hellraisers. They want to group up and uh, find uh, multiple heroes to kill people with. They want to go Bat Rider plus two damage dealers, and then maybe the Centaur from afar will lend in with the Stampede as needed. So if KPG can kind of break that up a little bit by finding a pickoff before Hellraisers are really ready to rumble, then that's going to be a pretty big deal and change up how the fights play out. Along with that, Hellraisers, I think, are going to be a little bit reliant on the jungle, and KPG can exploit that fact by just kind of taking a little bit more control, preventing stacks, taking stacks, or uh, just pushing while they're kind of preoccupied with that. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think Hellraisers is going to be pretty reliant on the jungle. It to, maybe they get some really early towers here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not a lot to stop any pushing early. I mean, you've got Liquid Fire. I feel like I should have done this calculation by now, how many level 1 Liquid Fires it takes to kill a tower. I honestly... It's probably barely double digits. Like, this does a lot, especially if there's a bit of a creep wave there. Uh, so any early towers can obviously uh, equate to really early Blink Daggers on the Centaur and the Bat Rider. And then, well, your strategy is pretty much up and running at that point. Dread maybe even gets a mechanism, but if Aloha is farming on a Jakiro, I would expect him to get a mech. Again, just to help with the push. Dread... If he doesn't have to get the mech on Dread, what do you think Dread goes for on the Pugna? To start rushing that Ags, or...? Who would pick up the mech if it wasn't for him? What do you mean? The Jakira? Yeah, but the Jakira's going to be a uh, hard support. Like, they can't run a farming Jakira along with Morphling, everybody. a Centaur, and a Battery. I know you mentioned Art Style Support Centaur, but this is a Which hero. Think Morphling's just going mid? I'm, I'm not sure about the lanes, and I'm not sure about who's going to be playing what. I think there are going to be swaps, but the bottom line is this is can't be, there's no such thing as a support Centaur. He has 130 mana cost stun. And 195 <laughs> mana to do it with. It's Easy. just nonsense. So, I don't, there's so many other heroes you would get for an like, AoE stun early game. I mean, obviously the Stampede's great at level 6, and it doesn't take that long for supports to reach that level nowadays. But I just can't see a support centaur until like a professional brings it right before my eyes and just kind of shoves my face today. This can work. Anything can, can work. Game. This is Dota 2. Ah. <sighs> Oh, there you go. So I think, yeah, it's going to be a mech on Dread. I think they're going to have to really just balance out their resources very carefully because, um, yeah, starting things off, uh, the fact that they have this many item-dependent heroes alone makes me a little bit uneasy. KPG just get a couple of kills ahead. 
Yeah, I, I mean, they could be super greedy, right? You could do Morphling middle, you could jungle the Batrider off the start, you could art style off lane, and then you can have Dread and Aloha uh, in that top lane together um, as sort of a pushing force. If the Sand King play that we got from Duvas yesterday is indi any indication of how he treats his jungle, I would not like to see those lanes. He didn't stack very actively, he didn't control it, manipulate it. It's the same idea, Sandstorm versus Firefly, but no, yeah. it, it just didn't seem to really click with him. It could so be... Like a number four position bat rider, I definitely agree with you as the possibility. But until we actually see the lens for ourselves, I guess uh, it's just not going to be an easy one to figure out. And according to our proclamations of DDoS against uh, the Hellraisers, uh, Pugna. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's true. Dread does generally bring a lot of delay to the games. Unfortunately, being popular on the internet not always a good thing. And Magic Hero also going to fall out here. Well, I guess Aloha got a little pop too popular for himself, too. Just jumped in. He, he was in a, a no-tail video once, so 15 minutes. These are his 15 <laughs> minutes of DDoS fame. Yeah, it's not the first time again casting them this week. And I don't know if you guys can hear the, the thunder and lightning in the background. I don't know. I'm really hoping I, I stay online here. Although, even if I go offline, it doesn't look like we're going anywhere. Speculating over what the lanes are going to be as, again, a bit of delay. I had a, a long delay this week. I think it was like... 30 minutes that Hippie and I had to kill of, of pause passing the Hellraisers. Well... More like, the, more like the delay Razors. If this was like 10 minutes in the game, I'd be happy to go over a little bit more about like where teams can go from here, where they went wrong, and a lot of other things. But at this point, because we are still literally at the spawn and it's been this long, uh, do you have any other topic you'd like to go into? I generally go to cosmetics, but it, there's not too many rolling around here. I mean, looking at the Shadow Shaman... That looks like the Immortal, so they must have swapped a hero. Because he's got the Immortal, but it's not being listed. Uh, so he's going to turn people into goats. So, Invoker. Rolling with. That cape's pretty sick. So, cape of the Eastern Range. So how about some bugs? I just clicked on Pugna, clicked on his cosmetics, and I got all of Jarocopter's cosmetics. Like, right there. And I'm like, okay, well, that's that's interesting. I doubt it's reproducible, uh, but I'm just like, okay, well, if it. he wants a welding helmet on the Pugna, then I guess that works. From, from last game, right? Yeah, yeah, the exact uh, ones from last game. I've got, uh, I've got all of Invoker's items over on, on the Pugna <laughs> right now, so, yeah, it's reprodu not exactly reproducible, but... Jakiro, man, no items. Oh, I, I wonder our kid Jakiro. Do you think that's a remodel coming to Jakiro, or I don't know. I, I really think that he needs something, but uh... I want an Ags out of the Ice Dragon's mouth, just like biting it. You know, yeah, it could so be sick. Kind of gets in the way, and you're actually breathing ice, though. I don't know. Whatever. Not everything has to make sense. Just put it under his cowboy hat. Maybe an Agony. <laughs> yeah, double Alpine twin-headed dragon. I think that's what we need. More Alpine sets. Alpine Batrider. Yep. So I'm gonna pull up them Dota jokes. How about an icy Batrider skin? I think that would be pretty pretty comical. I don't. I don't know. I don't you're know like, what they can make. You're like, no, we're done. Yeah. I. I at this point, there's. No. I. I. The. The craziest I've gotten with actually wanting a set would be like. Uh, adding particles inside Morphling to make him like an aquarium, like Fishbowl Morphling. And yeah, Fishbowl really cool. Morphling would be pretty awesome. I think there is, when he like walks around and has a bit of a water trail, I think there's some fish in that though, aren't there? And one maybe, I don't know. It's not, it's not common, it's like a random thing. I think well. But there Have you. a Slark inside of your Morphling, that could be a thing. Weird, just weird. You're, you're entering some dangerous... Dude, thing. I got it! If Lifestealer infests Morphling, you can still see Lifestealer. Okay, that, that would just be cool. That doesn't Only allies, aesthetic. though. Only allies. Yeah, yeah, obviously. That would be important. But uh, I don't know why that's not true already, to be honest. Just go yeah, on. I, Physics. I don't know. My immersion. <laughs> Lifestealer yeah. would have to pop out to breathe every once in a while. I guess he's already dead, so maybe that'd be fine. So that's what we've got. Yeah, this I got, is a, what joke. We've, I got uh, a joke. We've gone to. Got a joke. All right, go for it. How did the enemy know where Trant was hiding? I've not. I got nothing. How? Because Timber saw. It's <laughs> a good one. Keep that one. Why was Abaddon kicked out of the mafia? 
I don't know why. As he turned out to be a, a bad Don. Yeah, that one was worse than the first one. <laughs> they, they get bad from there. They, they, they just they keep going down. You, you don't get improved humor from this. You get cringeworthy. Okay, uh, why did Lich have to stop riding his bicycle? Something about frost on the chains. Yeah, yeah, his chain was frosted. Yes! Nice. What did Tiny say to Wisp when Wisp saved him? Oh, it's got to be one of his voice. Does he say, like, thanks for the something in one of his voice lines? He says, oh, no. I owe you one. Lift. I owe you one? I oh, owe. I owe you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, look at this beautiful rainbow from uh, from Compass Gaming, that teamwork. Oh, coordination. This is, this is something that you should practice every day, honestly. It's very uh, important part of just general improvement and coordination as a team. And uh, you got to do it in the right order. It's like order order your stuns, don't stack them, and they got to order the rainbow in the appropriate manner. So there's a sign to this, and until they get it down, they're just never going to be get, breaking into <laughs> TI five. I like. I think uh, the best thing to have during the pauses is the uh, the drawing macros where you can just draw like ridiculous artwork on the mini map. Those are my favorite. Okay. Well, I don't know what to do. Why Check out is Roshan depressed? Goodies. Answer! I, I don't know. Something about maybe cheese. He's been in that pit for ages. <laughs> but that one is that might actually be the best one yet. Besides the Timbersaw one. There was this Venomancer one that I used earlier. It was really good. But uh, I used it. I don't even remember how I told it to uh, Zayari a couple days back, but why does Luna hate Venomancer so much? Because he keeps trying to poison Nova. Poison, yeah, I was just about to, I was like, ah, uh, it's not going to be the Plague Wards. I like it. That's a good one, too. The puns, man, the puns. Got to practice up. Got a kid coming we've got, up. We've got 1437 face palming in our chat right now, so. It's deserved. It's like. Very deserved. Everyone is face palming. You've re we've really excited the chat. I mean, I don't know what else they want from us. Dude, Soon I'll... we'll be asking them for topics. Yeah. The, the, all I used to do when I was solo casting like SEO Dota, which is the worst when it comes to long duration pauses, is I would just break open the lore and try to voice act that shit out. Just do a dramatic re reading of, you know, Life Stealer escaping from prison and other His silly things like badass. that. But, uh, yeah. No, uh... Barring that, there's there's only limited topics of discussion here. How's your how's your morning been? Um, I mean, I I, I woke up early today and in and in like starting off my my sleep schedule so I could wake up even earlier tomorrow to cast. And I wake up to messages like, "Hey, we need you to cast Starlight on Europe." I'm like, "I'm really tired. I haven't slept, and and I'm gonna do it, of course, to help out and." Obviously, you've been casting all day, so I was glad you could join for Europe after you were casting the Southeast Asia, which ended in a pretty exciting game. So I watched some Dota, made a sandwich, made some coffee. That, that's my morning, and, and I've been casting here for thousands of people. Now I'm just praying my power doesn't go out because the storm is, is rolling on through. Gotta watch Dota, then cast Dota, and then play Dota, and feed relentlessly. I don't know, I don't know about the play Dota. I've been pretty upset these days. Uh, after after a full day, you usually just go into it and you're like, oh, screw it. If I if I go positive KDA, I'm happy. But uh, yeah, I had a, a pretty difficult time getting to sleep last night. I only slept like four or five hours, and then I woke up, Q just try, trying to wake up. I, I queue for AP, go Venomancer mid, and feed zero seven. It was the worst game I played in literally a year. But I had only like four <laughs> hours of sleep, but I could barely like pay attention to what I was clicking. Phoenix is a bitch to 1v1 though, so I have yes. that in my defense. That hero actually exists and probably will never be out of the... What's the last time a hero was out of the captain's mode? It's been like potentially a year. Who was the last one? Uh, like, the, the last one been, was like, probably Warlord Med or Medusa or being added back in, right? Okay, that's fair. Yeah, Medusa was taken out, so I think... Or Tusk, or maybe. Yeah, Tusk and, Tusk and uh, Huskar were around uh, the oh, same no, after the, after his rework. Like, they both got reworked. The Stone Gaze got reworked, and the Berserker's Blood got reworked, and they got added back in. But, yeah, it has been a little bit of time. 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't even know if we need 6.82 as much as we need just, you know, throw some heroes in. Throw them into the fire and then maybe throw it a quick, either a supplemental 6.81 patch to sort of balance those heroes down a little bit from where they think they should be. Or just, you know, throw on the full 6.82 with some hero changes to, I guess, Legion and Earth, Legion and Earth Spirit are the two I'm most looking forward to. Uh, Brood as well seems pretty dangerous in the Death Ball meta, but as soon as you add Legion, I feel like Brood is just going to fall off immediately. And every pro and right now is sighing out in relief that you are not, in fact, Ice Frog, because that would just screw so many people over as far as, like, oh, I have to ban this hero. Well, now every face is void and Razor and whoever gets into the... Like, we see like in every game, because you have to ban out, uh, like, I don't know, Earth Spirit, who suddenly becomes crazy because pros actually start doing what they can with them. Of course, I, I'm the kind of maybe overreact a little bit. I still think Tusk is kind of OP, but nobody actually... Dude, Snowball, it's so good. The only th a drawback is that, of course, you don't control where it goes after you yes. select your target, so you they can just run. cannot cancel the snowball. So, but it's still really good, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be more than in like months to come. There are going to be people that revisit that hero and are like, "Well, I could do a lot of really cool things with this." So, yeah, I really like. Uh, I mean, at least from pub experience, Death Prophet. Death Prophet obviously builds duels because it's amazing on her, and now that it cancels Blink, it's pretty much good on most intelligence heroes. But, uh, so she ults, they go on her, they try to bring her down, you will snowball, you'll put her on the snowball, exorcism is raining tear, you hit someone, you stun them, exorcism is still raining tear, then she yules, exorcism is still killing everybody. You just need some, uh, maybe like a Venomancer, some slows, a Viper, or even some stuns to keep people around there, and obviously the snowball itself is a stun. It's like, what is it, probably six, seven seconds of pure invulnerability for Death Prophet? Nice, nice. Or, you know, pick an Omni Knight, I mean, something. But, uh, yeah, no, if we want to talk theory crafting, I, I, that's pretty much what I do, is I look at what could be the most brokenly overpowered thing, even though it would never work, because, you know, lanes and other nonsense like that happens to lanes. But, uh, what was I thinking of this morning when I couldn't sleep? There was, uh, Warlock Upheaval with Naga Siren, Song of Siren, so you get a like se six or seven seconds of channel on it, and then you put down Midnight Pulse on top of all that, and you black hole a couple people. You have Bat Rider, um, if you're laying down Firefly and lassoing one of the targets. So BKB, which is generally the counter to responding to Naga Siren strats, is not going to work because black hole and lasso. And uh, there was one more that was really important to it. What? Oh, Jakira. That's like more AoE damage. Yeah, Macro Pyre? Just, just add in Jakira on top of that. So you, you're inside Midnight Pulse, inside Macro Pyre, moving at 100 movement speed, and three out of five heroes are disabled at least. Like, And then, of course, you have tons of push with Eidolons and with Liquid Fire. Other than that, all you need is a Blink Dagger and the Naga Siren, and you're golden. <laughs> and, you know, the perfect team fight synergy to just happen. I'm telling you, it's, you only need three out of five, and then you get every time in the game. And you're like, okay. I don't know. God Black is really an inspiring drafter. Like, his drafts are really hit and miss, but the ones that hit really make you think. And it's like, oh, well, what, I, what can I really do with this? Can I push behind this hero using this cooldown and all these other crazy things? There was actually a time where I, I had a Bloodseeker plus Gyrocopter strat where you would use your Flak Cannon. Silence. Yeah, you use your Flak Cannon cooldown and then immediately get Blood Raged. And you would just do so much damage. If if Fatal Bonds was a reliable spell, if like it increased the range of Fatal Bonds, and then uh, it Warlock would be, be first most pick, first ban. thing. Because uh, yeah, just the raw AOE damage that synergizes there. But you know, there's uh, you can't always get what you want. You have to worry about all these little tiny factors. So I think there's a song about that from somebody. Here. Oh my God, we've started. All right. All the chit chat and randomness aside, if there are still viewers, I'm impressed. Thanks mm. for sticking it out, guys. Uh, we're in Starliner Europe Hellraisers versus KPG. We did a lot of speculating earlier, then we got into puns, and then we just started talking. Um, so, if any of you remember the speculation, good for you. We're not going to go back over it. Art Style will be heading offlane on the Centaur War Runner. Dread Wards looks like he'll be supporting up. That means Dubas, he's got Boots of Speed and a Tango. The potentially safe lane farm, but that's a pretty popular just no, jungle build as well. Jungle. So it looks like they might be going for that greed that we did speculate about. Aloha dance on the carry Jakiro. And Morphling will go into the mid lane played by Yoki here. Wraith banned and pulled up some tangos. So right. yeah, they're going greed, but jungle being blocked out and invaded. Yeah, that's uh, the first thing they'll highlight is how jungle reliant they are going to be. So the fact that that's not going to be. Or was that last game? Man, it's been so freaking long. <laughs> uh, either way. No, that they're... was this game. Okay. Yeah, they're jungle reliant this game and last game, even though neither of these teams were in the last game. 
So one a camp warded up, the other they just pray for mud golems, and uh, yeah, they'll take it from there. Dubas might not have the best of time here in the Dire Side Jungle. It's definitely not as clean as the Radiant is, and stacking and farming. And like I said, it was a little bit lackluster how much emphasis he put it on the jungling Sand King. So yeah, we'll see exactly what comes of it. But there is still a lot of potential. I, I talk about Enigma as being one of the fastest farmers in the game. The real drawback is Dubas's early kill potential for anything bigger than the smallest creeps. The sticky napalm, the firefly, even at level one apiece, they're still not that great for enhancing damage. So he's at least going to wait for level three or four down bottom, and then maybe he'll make his way up top. In the meantime, some illusions to body block the spawns, those will expire, and eventually those creeps will come through. Yeah, it seems reasonable. We kind of talked about that last game with the Enigma. His jungle gets blocked out. You can always go to the, the enemy, or just to the offlane, or even the enemy jungle if you're Enigma, not so much for the Bat Rider. But they're looking to be aggressive here on the PSM. He's getting a couple Napalm stacks, and they're going to look to chase down. And it was the Hoof Stomp that's been skilled up for about 30 minutes on Art Style. Now he might actually get to use it at least once here with his Mana Pool. Yep, so we'll see a little bit of back and forth here, but as long as PSM keeps away, he's going to be pretty good. Aloha Dance has taken a lot of hits, but he's going to just pop his salve. This is what happens when you're up against the Skyrath. He uses the first, like, three quarters of his mana pool just to harass you, pops a couple clarities, and just keeps frustrating you. Do you see Yoku also trading some hits onto Jet? Uh, the Blades of Attack, the Quaz. Now he finally has a spell to work with, but prior to that it was just him getting waveformed and being hit for 70 damage a pop, so does hurt quite a bit when the Morphling goes for that aggressive stance and uh, soon to have his bottle out, I presume. Yeah, he's going to be just uh, not even 200 gold off of that. And in the meantime, he's just chewing through some uh, pooled tangos. Yeah, and Jet, I mean, the Cold Snap, he's got a spell to work with, but it's a nerfed Cold Snap. It does not do a lot of damage in the early game. It generally, you know, helps with, you know, if you're running a gank, if a support rotates over, but it's not going to be enough for Morphling. He can always just get away. Uh, and now we see PSM in some trouble. Napalm being stacked out with some fire. They're going to find themselves an entire creep wave, and they got to watch out for the Solar. Goku, what are you doing? What the hell the is going pack. on? Oh, didn't expect that one. Because it's the worst you. death I've ever seen in my life. He waveforms on top of him and doesn't even start strength morphing and, until the last possible second, and he only has one point in it, so the shift is slow. He literally dives against him two hits from death and then doesn't morph a point of strength. Questionable plays, man. I don't know. I just do not know. Oh, Batrider finds a regen, so they just chased with Firefly, throwing out a ton of sticky napalm, using a, most of his mana, losing a bit of health. They get the regen, so the aggression is again on in the bottom lane. Batrider's up to two. He can start jungling at level three, and well, the Sentry Ward that's blocking only has 45 seconds left, so it'll be a nice, uh, pretty smooth transition, I think, for Dubas. Yep, should be able to find some assistance there. Going to even clean up a few of these Radiant Creeps here. And he looks to complete the poll. He's like, okay, well, you were in the middle of this. We'll just snipe a few last hits, get the jungle experience 100%, and, yeah, leave you crying, unfortunately. Shadow Shaman can't do much about that here. He's going to stay at level 2 for a little bit. Actually, he's just barely in experience range, so he will pick up a third of this. Yeah, that experience range, it's pretty large. And, of course, all the jungles gonna split although that's a lot here so they split the experience on those jungle creeps but they do get a whole creep wave of farm there onto Dubas uh, probably that he got most of it there you can see that the bat riders at six last hits actually centaur 12 and four so what he buys he will go tranquil boots maybe gonna sell this tango here to pick up his boots no okay yeah he wasn't quite in range that's what the problem was he bought it in a stash he will finally get it on his person and Oh, now it's going to be really hard to edge out of this lane, even once Batrider leaves, now that he's got that up. They will find Fee Solo one more time, and, well, just constant pressure down here in the bottom lane. But up top, I think we're going to have to turn it around. Aloha Dance. No, in other words, down, which means you can't really go past that line. Yeah, short, for the short time being, anyways. And so, uh, in that position, oh, there's, I mean, the line is actually like a big arc all the way out here. You really can't cast spells outside of that long uh, range, but even yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, he's going for it. Double two spell cast, but almost brings himself down. Gorak dropping extremely low, and he's regenerating 10 per second with this Tango active, but that'll only last a short span, and he might have to make his way back to base. Bit of a misplay there. That's been doing a really oh, good job pulling mid. this big camp. The EMP will not connect on Yoku, now in a very active position on the map, and it's going to be a jet to pop the Sav and quaz it up to try to get his HP back where it needs to be. Another pool being contested here in the bottom lane, double damage. So Dubas is doing a really good job of getting all the runes there in the middle lane, which, you know, Yoki's got his bottle up. Uh, invokers don't really go for one. Yeah, I thought maybe the Courier's bringing one back, but yeah, he's got the face boots up early here on Jet. 
which is, I, I gotta say, is pretty odd these days. A lot of times you just see Invoker leaving it. But since he goes Quas Wax, that's the change. He goes Quas Wax into Phase Boots. So you were right, your speculation uh, with that Tornado EMP right now. He's rocking the EMP Cold Snap. Yep, they're gonna have Gautam rotate in with Concussive Shot Arcane Bolt. If he silences Yoku early, he's not gonna be able to Strength Morph, and that's gonna be a lot of damage coming in. EMP, almost all of his mana evaporates, cannot wave him away, but they will not pursue. They'll just uh, injure him substantially, make him limp back home at 335 MS, and that alone is enough. Now down bottom, they do get the pounce on to the Centaur post uh, Shackles, and that is going to be enabling a nice little kill there. Uh, one thing to highlight a little bit of is the fact that Slark is really good against Centaur War Runner when he has a high HP count because he can just stand and deliver a lot of right clicks there with the Essence Shift and Centaur needs those early stats to use his spells because, again, his high mana cost Hoof Stomp and as well just to have the strength to work with because it's so vital to his hero. On the other hand, if Arcel catches Arte with a little bit too low HP, it's very easy to burst him down with a two-hit combo once uh, Arcel hits at level five. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad lane. I mean, Centaur goes down because the Batrider left and maybe didn't quite comprehend that uh, on Arcel, and he drops to that Slark. But now he's already level 5 here at just 6 minutes, so he's doing fine. Batrider, Boots, and already halfway to a Blink Dagger, looking to stack up. So I think the double offlane transition into the jungle is working out here. That's a, a double stack about to be farmed up there uh, by the Bat. And another rune control here. They're all spawning bottom. Hellraiser's getting... Every single rune in this game, I think. They, I don't know about the first one, but since the two-minute mark, they've got the, the three that have spawned, two, four, and six. Now, into the middle lane, he goes with that hoof stomp. Jet knows that. Actually, does he even know they got it? There's no ward down there, but I think Slark was close by. So this is really going to force Jet to play very passive. And even though they got it, well, they didn't get a kill. Well, they, okay, one kill, that first blood that was questionable, and they force him back after that. He's still leading the farm, 32 and 9 right now. So Yoki not really having too much difficulties there in that middle lane. Yeah, Dubas is actually really catching up here by the fact that he was able to contest that pull that we saw down bottom and now farm up uh, essentially three stacks of creeps, finishing off the Seder here. He's actually going to be at 1,500 gold plus his boots. Oh, we'll Gorak. Oh, boy. Double edge to level six. Our style now with the Stampede. It doesn't want to use it. The Shackle goes off and is canceled immediately by Fee Solo himself, and now the Stampede. The Tornado, though, will catch, but can they still catch up? No, Maybe that not. shackle, if it had connected, that should have been an easy kill. But It did, but he like didn't mm -hmm. think it was going to, and then I think it canceled it like immediately. Yeah, so he, it went on cooldown. It just went right, right he right-clicked on the ground after the fact to, to keep moving on, because like you said, he didn't think it connected in the fog. But it did, in fact, and that puts it on cooldown and disables their chance to get the kill. In the meantime, uh, that tower kill will be given to the Dire in general, and that really helps out Morphling in particular. Yoku hasn't had the best time uh, since that death, but his kill, his CS count is still pretty high. So that means that he's going to be able to build up his first starting items, the Treads Aquila, and from there he's actually a relatively hard to bring down. Still, the Skyros' Ancient Seal is what should, in fact, uh, make that happen, but we'll have to see if there's going to be any setup here. It looks like on the Dire... Obs Observer Ward front. It is in range of the Sentry Ward, and once the Radiant pushes into the high ground, they'll be able to kill it off, or Skyrath will just take it right now. Yeah, with the Skyrath being in the game, I mean, it was the first pick, and, and they will pick that Morphling up last. I mean, it's a little surprising because that silence goes such a long way to, to stop Morphling from doing well, or you know, being able to escape those ganks in the early game and then transition back into farming until you get really, really strong. But now Dread in the top lane, about to get dove but now backing off goddamn with that haste now running out don't want to dive under the tower he's very very squishy nyx could maybe take a few hits but i don't think gorek wanted any part of that two boss has a blink dagger up and available lasso as well and he might be making a rotation Tiny. as soon as he fills up nine minutes in not too shabby did take a little bit of experience away from art style but again the important thing is he's level six so they're gonna push him mid very confident here as the bat rider can just rejoin his allies with a, a tp scroll so there's gonna be a tornado mp come out on aloha dance he's gonna drop down very quickly but they will stampede him away and stampede in art style yoki there as well and that's Skyrath. I mean, only level 4. He can't do too much. No Mystic Flare. He's got two points in that silence. Obviously maxing Ancient Seal this game because of the Morphling as opposed to the Arcane Bolt. So, I mean, even just with the two points in Ancient Seal, his damage is down a little bit uh, from what it is normally maxing that Arcane Bolt. He doesn't have level 6 yet. And when he does have Mystic Flare, he's in real danger of just killing himself to the Nether Ward. 
I mean, not quite yet, because it's only level 1, and actually now bottom lane, we've got a long range shackle into the pounce. Art style in a bit of trouble, has already used the stampede, could throw out the stop, gets it onto 2 right there, lasso out on oh, the PSM, wow. and they lose 2. The double edge, I think, connects there, brings down the Slark. Yoki also in town, it is uh, the Batrider's fire that actually gets the kill on the Slark after that double edge. Uh, that Centaur pretty much killing himself with, but was going to die anyway. Now continuing to chase up Gorik. They will throw out the Nether Ward. Decrep to get a little bit closer. And look at the Decrep with that waveform damage. So much. Yeah, so easy to underrate that waveform. But it's 325 magic damage, and it is amplified substantially by that Decrepify for its two-second duration. So All Sentry Ward? Uh, a little bit of Ward Wars going on, but Dire will triumph. They keep their Sentry up in the midst of the river, and obviously KPG just won't ward there anymore. But... Yeah, that kill on Slark was actually pretty huge. He was sitting at like half HP inside his ultimate, and that is generally speaking for immortality for the Slark for the duration, but he gets hit by a double-edged cleave, not the double-edged itself, but just hitting in the general AoE, and then the Firefly is enough to take him over, and that's kind of what I mentioned earlier, is just that combo. Uh, Slark still has a, a low health pool to play around with, even with this Bracer and the Treads, and yeah, he definitely has to watch himself here, when he where he possesses himself, and... Uh, where he commits to. <laughs> Good luck denying towers against Jakiro and Pogna. The middle tower will fall, and it actually baffles Ooh. me how Hellraisers didn't get the last hit on the tier 1 tower uh, from their safe lane. Uh, but they will clean up the middle, so two tier 1 towers down. No towers claimed yet for KPG, but in the bottom lane there's a bit of a fight going oh. on as the centaur will fall initially. A sheep goes out looking for the lasso. Yeah, he will just lasso and pull back. The poor Shadow Sham. Not a lot of Napalm stacked up, so not a lot of damage going out yet. The Serpent Wards drop. Arte looking for that pounce. We'll find an Ice Path instead. Now the Liquid Fire trying to come out here. The Nether Ward on the retreat. Aloha, he's a core hero here, but he will go down. Nix Assassin gets him with the Mana Burn. Nether Ward cleaned up. Serpent Wards are there, causing a, quite a ruckus. Dread all the way falling back behind his tower. That concussive shot will go out it's not going to do much though so i think all in all that that works out really nice for kpg they do kill that core jakiro who almost has his mech yeah it's kind of just a huge mistake by hellraiser to even engage there once the master from wards were dropped and they didn't lose anything they yeah. could just walked away and that would have been perfectly fine for them but they try to force the issue they get dropped down and they even use the stampede to just disengage so cooldowns wasted essentially and just uh, didn't really need to take that fight in the first place. Still, they're in a position where with that mechanism behind them, they should be able to push down a lot of towers and take a lot of fights, maybe even an early Roshan. Uh, not the uh, most obvious Roshan lineup, but Liquid Fire alone with mechanism. Helps a lot, yeah. And then uh, they do have the Firefly vision to make sure that nobody's encroaching from outside the pit. Yeah, and then even though they do get a kill down there, KPG, I feel like the bigger cooldown that's wasted is their own. I mean, they use the Serpent Wards there. It's not the longest cooldown, and actually in 30 seconds you can maybe look to head into another lane and try to bring down a Tier 1 with his Mass Serpent Wards. But when you drop him out of a range of tower like that, it always kind of slows down uh, the potential of your draft uh, when you have that Shadow Shaman to take towers off the map. And then so far Hellraiser is not really being slowed down too much. They're two kills behind. Arguably one of those shouldn't have been had on Yoki. Uh, that morphling play to give up the first blood. Lucky for him, I missed it. So he didn't, you saw it, but, but I missed it. So I, I spared him maybe some embarrassment mm -hmm. there. It was awkward indeed. But since then, you know, moving forward, we're going to see maybe a lasso play. Definitely wants it, but uh, not really going to find it here just yet. The Don't important thing here. is that art style is uh, able to follow through with it as well. He has a blink dagger. And that's a very early timing for uh, kind of this duo offlane. Like, both Centaur and Batrider kind of took resources from one another in the early stages of the laning phase, but they both have come out on top when it comes down to the item builds, and now they can just keep on melting these towers. And it had Morphling not really considered the most adept push hero, but with some replicant play, the fact that he has this Aquila, and a lot of right-click damage, it's going to go down pretty quickly. All right, Shadow Shaman, Fee Solo, Mako, PSM will drop the Super Wards oh, that really boy. glitch out. They need to fix the uh, animations on that. But they get the Tier 1 tower up there on that lane. It's actually Sark that gets the last hit on it. And bottom lane, don't even have to use the Stampede. Art Style and crew able to disengage. Don't really have to commit to pushing the Tier 2. So it's a Tier 1 tower trade, which I feel like isn't, isn't too bad, isn't too good for either team. But, you know, losing those safe lane towers could hurt you later on, especially if you lose that second one. Your jungle is very much up for grabs at that point. Especially to a bat rider who can just farm it so fast. He's being chased up here. Yeah, Dubas. Well, nice flame break to buy sometime, but will go down Ice Path a little too slow. And now Shadow Dancing 
being very, very cautious. Probably did not need to use the Shadow Dance, but will anyways. Just making sure not to give up anything, and it's it's not a long cooldown, only 60 seconds. Yeah, if the Pugna was waiting in the Fog of War, the Decrepify and Waveform combo would have been enough to burst him, so better safe than sorry, he will bail out. Uh, they do still have the Stampede, as you mentioned. Uh, Artstyle got hit by the MP, so did uh, one other hero, so the fact that he didn't use the Stampede made it so that the Invoker could get a cost-effective EMP delaying their push, but... The fact that, along with that, now they have the cooldown and now they want to fight. Lasso available, but it's going to be Compass Gaming to move out and uh, smoke up. Going for Roche. Yeah, checking it at the very least, making sure that's not going to be taken out by HR. Like we said, there, there's some real potential there, especially with this mechanism, but they see what's up bottom lane and they're going to be the ones to try to start the fight out. Yeah, looking for the vendetta on Gorak. Oh, the lasso ops on Invoker. He is priority number one for that initiation, but on the backside, I think Centaur Artstyle just gets blown to pieces. Same thing goes for Invoker, though, so one for one. Starting this fight four for four. PSM going to drop the Serpent Wards now, force some Dubas off, but the Nether Ward also down. A couple attacks will clean up that as... Oh, Skyrath now being forced away. Arte right behind him, working on a low Aloha Dance and a Yoki. Can't they bring him down, though? The slow, now the sheep, but still morphing. Morphing over to that strength, does have an Ogre Club, so a lot of strengths to work with. They will kill Gorak, so now 2 for one somehow. Hellraiser still coming out ahead here, even throwing in some Napalm. Is Dubas still sticking around to get that XP up, and Aloha gonna try to bring down some Serpent Wards, but quickly realizes they are quite strong, and he will back off. 3 for 1, and it's a 1 kill advantage still for KPG. Yeah, the mistake there was trying to bring down the Morphling after the Ancient Seal hit, because the Ancient Seal kept his Strength Morph on permanently. So essentially, that is a full 5 second silence where he is forced to Morph Strength, and he actually went down to 38 right click damage, something you could easily ignore in a team fight. He's a non-factor, but he is tanky. He survives extensively because of the high HP pool, and it could have been just something that they completely turn their back on and focus on uh, the rest of it. But instead, they put as much as they could into that Morphling. He tanks up like a couple thousand HP worth of damage, and then he just walks away. So their, their wasted time is HR's win, and they're about to even up the kill score, as well as potentially look at Roche. Yeah, Yoki is out in front, 6.5k net worth. The Slark not too far behind, Arte at 6.5. And then we got that Jakiro Aloha dance with his mech, with his treads. Uh, earlier, we saw Jakiro gearing towards building up an early Aghanim Scepter. I think we talked about liking the Veil of Discord better in that game, and I'd be very, very inclined to agree. Same thing here. There's so much AoE damage, so much magic damage. Veil of Discord seems like an obvious choice here for Aloha, but he might get killed while he's trying to find some farm for that. He's standing on the low ground, up on the high ground, Vendetta, and Slark also. Uh, with that Shadow Blade, and they will find him, and he will die. Yeah, and that's the duo roam, the Slark, and the Nyx Assassin we were looking for right when we saw it in the draft. Now we see the Blaster oh, down at bottom. They will stampede him away. Whether or not that was necessary, doesn't matter. He is going to be dropping down. So they go ahead and earn up the Centaur who had Tranquil Boots, but as long as I keep one charge available for whatever they need in the midst of the engagements, it's just a nice little sustain tool, and can even fuel their push. The problem is, of course, they are lacking the Jakiro. He's at level 10 without a point in ulti, and uh, currently dead, looking to TP to defend mid. Yeah, it's definitely not going Ags yet, if he doesn't even have a point in ulti. And he's at the point, is he's level 10, right? So he would go for the, you know, the 10 and 11, but I think he's just going to max out his spells first, which, which seems pretty reasonable. I don't see Macro Pyre being too effective here. Recently I've seen it used to keep Void out of his own Chronos, or even with Void in his Chrono, but now Arte in the middle lane looking to get aggressive once more. Arte's Ward's gonna be dropped, both for the team fight and being able to hit the tower. Aloha silenced up immediately, then Shackle, but he gets out of that. PSM will drop there. It's one for one right now. Aloha still alive, but getting very, very low. Trying to take out Gorak, will take out Gorak. Now forced onto the low ground. Oh, where he finds Invoker and Skyroth, not <laughs> what he was hoping for. He drops two for two. Serpent Ward's cleaned up, so the Tyrant Tower gonna stay intact. This Nether Ward in a good fortified position in the tree line, but Arte doesn't really care too much. And yeah, Death Pack through the Decrep will do a lot of damage. It brings him down. And a well, fairly even fight, and, and no structural advantage for it, or no buildings. Uh, KPG. Yeah, KPG. Tier one. They're not able to follow up on it, but they still kind of get a little bit better end of the kill count. The thing, though, is that Morphling is going to be benefiting more from the general uh, coming out ahead of those fights. 4, 1, and 3 is him. He is going for the BKB, so early fighting build, and this allows him to just morph pretty much all agi. Like, he can go a couple yeah. of points in strength here and there, but for the most part, he's just going to be going for the raw right click and using the BKB to keep himself up. Now, one reason why I think that Macropire is actually pretty bad here uh, is that aspect of low mana pools. They have one set of arcane boots on the 
have Pugna, and that is it. So if they can only get that kind of sustain, a single EMP, and Chikira has enough mana for a spell or two, including the mech. So it's just uh, not really worthwhile at this stage in the game. If you want to guarantee your mech as well as uh, making sure your other spells are very relevant, you're just going to max those out. And I, obviously, Macro Power is still a great skill, but it's not really going to change how these fights play out too much, and uh, the mana constraints are a very real concern. So Yeah, I don't know if it's worth 330 mana at this point in the game for, for a rank 2 Macro Power. And EMP goes out. Jet is here, though, and maybe a bit of trouble. Actually, Arte is there. Aloha Dan's having trouble now. He's a clunky hero. He's not too fast. Just with the mech. He's 2-4-4 four four right now. Arte is having no problem running him down, and will be able to waveform away. Looks like he kind of dodged that pounce there. I'm not sure if you can waveform out of oh, pounce. Oh, yeah, definitely can. You can't. You're, you can? Because you can't leap, so I wasn't sure if it You're was. invulnerable when you waveform. You can do whatever the hell you want, so... That's, uh, like in Dota 1, it actually took you, well, in earlier iterations of Dota 1, oh, Dread just explodes that mana burn. But uh, in early iterations of Dota 1, it actually literally took your hero out of the game and then put him back in the game where the waveform ends. And that was uh, interesting. That's kind of how invulnerability frames started in that context. But in this, obviously, it's not necessary to code in that fashion. They just uh, keep him on the move and uh, make him unassailable during that time frame. So he breaks through the leash and uh, just pretty much does whatever he wants unless he's silenced. And that turns us back to the Skywrath Mage. They really need to time up these Ancient Seal Tornado EMP combos and just uh, make it so that he really doesn't have the mana to work around things. But of course, now that he has the BKV, that's not really a concern. He just, that's the reason he picks it up is to avoid that combo and maybe a few stuns from the uh, other heroes, the Shadow Shaman, the Nyx, and so forth. Yeah, we'll delay the shotgun if he even wants to go for it. Might just start going for that battle morphling. Maybe even pick up a Manta so he can get out of the silence without burning a BKB. But once more, Serpent Wards are going to be dropped and they will claim the tower. Looking for the deny, but they do not get it. Serpent Wards to be cleaned up. Hellraiser's now at a three kill disadvantage, but we've really seen the, the aggression of just the pickoffs from Arte and this Nyx Assassin Gorek. It's, it's devastating. And Hellraiser's have. They were one kill behind, now suddenly three kills behind just from pickoffs. So I think KPG, they've got their strategy, they're running with it. It's working out reasonably well. They're even in towers now. And looking at the graphs, we can see pretty much dead even on uh, gold and a little bit ahead, about 2,000 ahead in experience. So it's going to be a tight game. And I mean, the shotgun's not coming out. So Yoki is, I would say, less scary uh, for the time being. But oh, yeah. of course, if, you know. His space is being created in the team fights. He can still do a lot with the waveform, lining that up with the Crepify, the BKB as well, just just a right click even. Yeah. Right now, if anybody is vulnerable to a Shao K, actually, Jakira oh, going man. down very quickly. Yeah, they'll Ancient Seal him up too, but the Stampede, I think, is going to mount for safe. Dubas will be connected with the leash, and immediately the supports here for KPG just get blown up. They will find a rebuttal kill there on the Batrider, so one for two at the moment. Arte now trying to run away along with Jet Gorak. The Impale is going to miss as Yoki will waveform over it, and then the Nyx Assassin will blink out almost immediately and now the push is a bit dangerous liquid fire rank four Gorek trying to slow it down put out that mana burn maybe art style just wants the the threat of the tower no he will actually blink across and try to find arte and the the promise stuns they get him they use everything the ice blast and of course the adaptive strike holding him there and they that's a big pick off for them skyrath has respawned he's tping in and uh, tping gonna cancel it and the tower, the tier 2, oh, they fortify, maybe hoping for a deny. Pugna is around. I don't really see how they expect to deny that. Morphling even will get the last hit now. 2,500 gold uh, in his bank. Yeah, the Jakiro should have died a lot faster, but actually the Tornado hit right after the Mystic Flare came out from the Skyrath, and he pulled him out of it. He made him invulnerable for the f uh, pretty much full duration of Mystic Flare, and so that Ancient Seal target just didn't really do it. Now an ICMP will come out, though, and Gorak will follow it up with a great stun. It will take some damage from the ward, but in general, Aloha Dance is taking some big hits. Do they have the four staff for him? It looks like it's not going to happen. He will go down this time around, and they are going to try to pursue. The Stampede will come out, Waveform as well, but the Blink Stun coming in, and Yoku is going to maybe have to pop his BKB. There it is, the BKB TP comes out, no way to counter that, but it's interesting to note that through that entire team fight in the mid, he didn't have to use his 10 second BKB, but in that case, they get a little bit too big for their britches, they leave the top tier 2 in deny range, and they do escape exhausting that CD. Yeah, I mean, that's what? That was his second BKB use? First. No, that was his first BKB use. I mean, he just hasn't really needed it for the fights. As long as he's staying on the back lines, and now that he's got up his, his replicate level 2, so it lasts uh, quite a bit longer, you can get a lot done with that. You can just sort of farm in the jungle here as he's going for the Lincolns. He picks up the Perseverance here. 
and will be making his way to that Lincoln's, uh, notably, so we can't get hexed, or the Ancient Seal, so really just a pure defensive build with BKB Lincolns, I mean, we saw Weaver do that a lot back in the times of TI3, so it's nothing new, and it looks like Aloha Dan says, it's finally time to do the Roche. We just won that last team fight. We maybe even feel stronger. It really does depend on the initiation. Like, if we see Art Style and Dubos get in those lassos, those blinks and stomps off, it's how Rizzo should win the fight. If we see Slark and Nyx Assassin team up and just destroy a target, well, it's KPG who's winning the fight, pending uh, tornadoes, good or bad, from that Invoker. But Gorak is here. I would like to see sentries down. You think they'd have sentries down? Uh, they've got to expect this. Uh, and there they go. They find him. They have a gem, Batrider. Yep, so he just had to kind of come into the pit. And now, actually, we do see Compass thinking the same thing. EMP, EMP. But they will be able to dodge it from the northern end. And Arte is committing wow. pretty hard for this. His ulti is about to expire. Yeah, this is not... Oh, he will be able to pounce out. Art style hoping to get in front to stop that. Dread now being the focus of Goddamn, but it's not going to be enough. Damage there. Uh, the Mystic Flare kind of missed. And now uh, we got a BKB from Yoki. He's going to go ahead and start morphing up. He will also waveform down the cliff. Another nice iPad's going to catch two. The stuff from Art style to follow up. And, well, that's a dead Salark. 16-16, Hellraiser's even it up. The Roshan's still alive. They're gonna try to clean up the Serpent Wars now. Our style pretty tanky. Again, not enough damage to really bring him down. He's close, about 100. And now they will finally go into cleaning up these Serpent Wards. So they try to put a lot of emphasis there, but it's just not in the sale. Still want Rosh. Half HP. Yeah, I mean, Yoku just used his Replicant to TP back home, heal up, add you morph up, and then uh, replicate right back in. So they want to commit to it. Slark. On the other hand, is trying to do the same, but it's very difficult to do. Even with his passive movement speed and the smoke, it's hard to get in. They go Gorak will go in, uh, take out this ward, get some stuns out, and distract them, but <laughs> not distraction worth it. cost him his life. He got the 80 gold, but he also did die there. He's got buyback available if they still wish to contest it, but at this point, it might just be a losing battle. You might want to give it up. No, he will buy back. He's trying to come to this Arte looking for Yoki. Yoki's BKB nice, still on nice cooldown. Ice Path going to catch two. The supports are falling. And once the supports fall, there's not much they can do. Arte with not a lot of support here. Adaptive Strike is trying to bring down the Nether Ward. He will get the morph, and he will be able to Shadow Dance away. So he actually gets it. Uh, double kill, though, for Aloha Dance. Killing those supports, killing the Invoker Jet. Uh, looking out for that Shadow Dance passive. Arte trying to get back to full HP. Dread is going to be looking for him. And all right, they want to go back for Rush once more. Rush is like, leave me alone. It's been in that pit for ages, man. For ages. But, uh, yeah, I don't know why Aloha Dance tunnel vision so hard on offense and didn't actually get the mech out of the Morphling, but nevertheless, they still get oh, some good kills. They force a lot of buybacks, and now they go on Gorek. That decrep keeping Dubas alive. There was obviously some amplified dark pack damage, but no right clicks to Is follow through, and now it was a dieback. Oh. It might be here. Arte is going to be in some trouble stuck in the trees. Batrider, Firefly running out, which is good timing. Doesn't want to burn down those trees that, uh... He was trapped in, so is that double dieback, right? Yeah, both of them bought back. The Nyx and the Slark are down, and so, so 60 seconds for the Slark. This is absolutely just this huge drain on their economy now. The Slark was almost to a Scotty. He had so much gold, and now dying twice, buying back, accomplishing nothing. Man, they wish they had never even contested this rush in the first place, because what was going to be a good transition into a mid-game build is suddenly him sitting here 20 min 28 minutes with essentially nothing. Like, if he could turn that Scotty later on into, like, a Basher and uh, Abyssal Blade, then he could have a lot of tools to bring down the Morphling. But, no, in this case, he's going to be just sitting on these same items for quite some time and no buyback to boot. Indeed. All right, well, he's got the point booster. Slark looking for that Scotty, but now very, very far off. What do you think of the Atos? The Rod of AUI, the Rod of Aoi, however you want to say it, for the Jakiro. I feel like I really would have liked to see the Veil of Discord, but he will go for, for the Rod of Atos. I mean, there's not that much reliable presence as far as like uh, keeping people in the, the position you want them to, to keep your spells going. If you can just Atos somebody that Pugna happens to be life draining, that's going to enable it to do more damage than if it was Veiled up, because you get the longer duration. As well, you just if you have the speed, because of the Stampede, you want to make sure that the enemy can't run. So, in my opinion, they are both are good items, but this one gives a little bit more direct durability, and it certainly is valuable in its own right. So, yeah, I, Flat health is pretty nice. So, we'll see if they can make use of it here, if they try to pick off the Nixess, but he just blinks as deep as can be, and the Batrider is not going to be venture. Okay. <laughs> as I say, that Dubaz makes oh, an interest. trailblazing. Yeah, not going to be finding him out. And he's got the boots of travel up on the Batrider right now. Another ultimate orb for Arte. So actually, he's not that far off. 
Uh, two of the more expensive components. Obviously needs another ultimate orb. And oh, oh, he will oh. pounce into nothing. What a blink dagger there from Art Style. Suspecting maybe something was up. It certainly was. Yep. That's what's up. So, and uh, Art Style with a Sanjh and a Plate Mail. You, are we looking for Shiva's Guard here? On uh, No, it's going to be an AC. I thought maybe he might want a Shiva's Guard just for a more mana pool against the EMP and... You know, against the right click of the Slark and the Invoker, it seems like it would be okay, but once the AC, just for that aura. Yeah, frankly, the AC makes no sense here, to be honest. Like, it's a great item, and I there's a lot of times where I'm like, okay, build AC. Why aren't they building AC? But this team is not about physical damage. The Morphling's there to an extent, but now we're going to see AC come out onto Art Style, and he's going to be drained of every Boom. ounce of his mana. Yeah, I, I kind of don't like Jakir getting treads. I mean, I know I did it to be a little bit more more durable, but we already saw in the mid game, even with those treads, he was still getting blown to pieces, except for that one time in the mid lane right around here when maybe the game kind of turned around with that that tornado that kind of kept him alive and then a stampede afterwards. But the mana boots, double, even triple mana boots against EMP seems very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you there. The, you need at least two, minimum. And actually, EMP got buffed, so I'd say three is uh, closer to a minimum nowadays. But... Yeah, all the same. They're just doing what they can with one, and it's it, it's worked to this point. So you can't complain with the results at the very least. Yoku putting a quick little stun out, but the EMP just barely m missing him. That would have been painful. It, it makes no sense that a tower won't three shot the Nether Ward. They need to change that. But uh, tower focusing on the Nether Ward a little bit. The tower though will drop. The Nether Ward prevailing, however, still for this team fight. Serpent Wards are going to be dropped already. The Invoker, wow. everyone dying right now. Those very very quickly. Words. Jet awesome buys mana. back here. Yeah, and I think that almost killed the, the mm -hmm. Shadow Shaman exactly. just for dropping the Serpent Wards. And now two dead. Liquid Fire, everyone's still alive, a fresh Nether Ward on the back lines of this team fight here for Hellraisers as they're bringing down the melee racks, pretty much no problem. A decent Impale buying some time, Artega to try to pick a target right now, the Long Reigns, Life Drains, Aghanim's up on Dread, and that's what you get on the support when you take this many towers, and they just clean up everybody right there. Uh, Who needs mana? Really cool AoE combo right here. Like, you look at the Slark and it's like, oh, I'm perfectly fine. I'm out scot free. I'm at 50% health in my ultimate. No, the waveform, the nether blast, all these AoE spells just flying about, and there, there is no safety. Art Style's gonna cop a lot of damage, <laughs> runs right back into the Mystic Flare, and uh, yeah, he will be taking a spill. Yeah, well, they lose one lane of Rax regardless. Bring it down the Centaur, maybe they save another. They will lose the tier 3 tower top at least. Now the melee going to be focused. I mean, oh my gosh, Liquid Fire, dude. It just destroys buildings. And of course, Pugna still alive there. No ma- Ah, the GG, okay. That's it. They're calling it. Go. Two lanes of Rax, not going to worry about it. Tough game. Tough game indeed for the side of the Radiant there. If our tape maybe built up a little bit more momentum, it would have been fine. But that off lane. Uh, the new meta duo centaur bat offlane. Sounds like something you'd see in your pubs when they're fighting over who's the number three position, but in this case, it works out very well. They don't get pressured at all by that Shadow Shaman. They get their blinks up and early, and uh, the Morphling makes up for uh, one little mistake. He only has two <laughs> deaths in the entire game, and uh, as silly as that one, one might have been, maybe you chalk it up to lag. Uh, you say, okay, well, he didn't... He wasn't seeing the game the same way we were seeing it, and in the end... Every place since then.